This time last year, we had grass in this part of our yard, but last fall, the boys decided to play in the leaves, and when they were finished, we didn't take care of the pile of leaves. So this spring, I found them out here and realized, oh, wait a minute, we have killed the grass underneath that pile of leaves. This reminds me of a scripture that contrasts God's word with grass. So I'd like to share that with you today. It's from Isaiah 40, verses 6 through 8. All flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Mankind and his words and opinions are like the grass. They wither and fade away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Isaiah 55, 11 says that God's word accomplishes whatever he desires it to. And Hebrews 4, 12 describes his word as being powerful and active in our lives. Peter explains that it is the imperishable word of God by which we are born again to a new kind of life, an eternal life. That's in 1 Peter chapter 1. In John 17, it says the word of God sanctifies us, makes us holy more and more like Jesus. With all of these wonderful things that we learn about God's word from his word, what step can I take to know him and his word better? And what step can you take? The next step for each one of us. Because we're all in different places in our relationship to God's word, we should each take the next step. Maybe you're at the beginning of your journey with God and his word, and that next step is just to read a short paragraph or a short story from his word each day, as many days as you can. Maybe you're ready to increase the amount that you read, or maybe you're ready to slow down and instead of reading more, read more deeply. Take a note or two. Write down questions that you have. Or maybe you're ready to copy things that inspire you, phrases or scriptures that are favorites from your Bible reading. Maybe you'd really like to be more consistent in reading God's word. I encourage you, if that's your goal, your next step, that you would put your Bible in a place that you will sit every day and tie that Bible reading time to something that you do every day. Maybe it is drinking your coffee in the morning, or maybe it is before you check your email or before you read the news. Maybe you're doing these things and the next step for you might be to begin memorizing. Memorizing does not have to mean that you memorize the whole book of James. Memorizing can mean just remembering a phrase and maybe the reference or the Bible address of the verse. You can start small. Maybe you start small and then you're ready to move on to memorizing whole verses or, or a section of scripture. Maybe your next step with scripture is beginning to pray the scripture, to recite it as you, as you pray, Praying those words for someone else that you know, or for yourself, or praising God using the words of the scriptures. All of these ideas can sound overwhelming, but the main idea is for you to take whatever your next step is, for me to take whatever my next step is. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would give us a hunger and a thirst to know you better and to know your word better. We pray that you would help us to find time, to make time, to be intentional, to read your word, and to let it change us, to let it teach us. Lord, we pray that your word would indeed accomplish what you have sent it to do in our lives, that it would be powerful in us, actively changing us and sanctifying us to be more and more like Jesus. Help us to trust your word over the words of men, in Jesus' name we pray, amen.